Hello everyone. Today I will talk about a very very interesting and also serious topic which is neck tucking. Now earlier I've been talking about the importance of uh, seizing the cervical hinge, right, the dreaded cervical hinge. I've spoken that uh, as you extend and hinge back at the cranial cervical junction or at the mid neck or low neck or whatever you risk, well first of all obviously it will cause impairment of cranial cervical stability because you're not using the muscles, you're just hinging at the neck. Now another very important thing is that it can cause chronic venous congestion because you are wrapping the internal jugular vein around the transverse process of the C1. Okay. The reason for that is that when you do this, the upper cervical uh, corpi, the, 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 the the vertebra, they come forward, but the jugular foramen, which this uh, the internal jugular vein comes through, it goes back. So it goes back in relation to the transverse process. Now that will cause positional compression of the internal jugular vein. Now let us talk about neck tucking. This is something I don't see so often, but I've seen a few patients do this, and I've also caught myself doing this actually positionally by pulling the chin in like this. Because sometimes you have a patient coming in and they have that hinge at the neck but they're pulling back and they're standing like this and they have that nasal voice most commonly so you feel that the spinous processes they are in the indentated okay and the cranial cervical junction is actually flexed not extended like this this is the common one right right that is that is the old hinge but they are hinging like this and they will often have especially with men they will have a very prominent trachea now here is what can happen uh, at the base of the skull, we have something called the styloid process. Okay, between the styloid process, which is just in front of the transverse process of the C1, uh, there emerges the neurovascular bundle with uh, the cranial nerves 9 to uh, 12 and the internal jugular vein. Now, research shows that with up to I think it's about 50% of the population, I can correct that later if it's wrong, uh, the styloid process and uh, the neurovascular bundle uh, transmits directly beneath, between the transverse process and the styloid process. And here is the main point. Now, if we flex back at the cranial cervical junction, that will cause the C1 to come forward but it will cause the styloid process to come down and approximate the C1. Now, this can lead to compression, and actually quite significant compression of the neurovascular bundle, most specifically the internal jugular vein. Now, this can cause intracranial hypertension. And intracranial hypertension can cause migraines, dizziness, endolymphatic high drops, okay, with Meniere's disease, for example. It can cause chronic fatigue syndrome, which I have actually discovered on my own. Because what I discovered is that the more I was working on my computer writing, I was sitting like this, and I was more and more and more fatigued. I could wake up after eight hours of sleep, I felt horrible. I could not even go to the gym anymore, first time in probably five years or more. And what I discovered was that I was positionally or intermittently occluding my internal jugular veins, causing intracranial pressure. Now, the presentation of this problem can be very diffuse, because generally you will expect migraines, vision impairment, and so on. And at least I perceived intracranial pressure. I had none of those. I just felt like shit. I felt very tired. Okay? Now, I'm not saying this will happen to anyone, but this is a very subtle problem. So, here's the thing. We do not want to be situated in the neck tuck. We don't want, especially with the neck, the neck tuck together with the neck hinge. You know that is a double, a double, double trouble almost. Sitting like this. Obviously, you need to teach the patient to pull the back of the head up. But contrarily with what I've said before, that you need to tuck that chin, they actually need to elongate the neck but pull the chin up to increase the interval between the styloid process and. The transverse process of the C1 of the atlas okay so they need to go from here to come forward like this and they need to learn to stay there and it's very difficult it's very very difficult for these patients now for me and I you know perhaps I cued some of my patients to do this as well so I'm gonna have to inquire all of my patients about this when we sit and we have a long neck position 
we need to make sure that we are not overly flexing the cranium. Now there's about 30 degrees of flexion extension at the cranial cervical junction in the AO joint, atlantic occipital joint. So we want to stop not all the way in here because at least in my case I know for sure that I was compressing that internal jugular vein, I was, I was narrowing the atlantostyloid interval. So now I have to make sure when I work I cannot sit like this, I have to sit with my chin more extended, with my head slightly more extended so that I do not compress that atlantostyloid interval. Now this is a little confusing um, video, I assume a lot of information. Now the main point is that we need to be aware that over tucking the chin can be extremely detrimental. This is something I learned very recently. So we need to be, uh, we need to be aware of that. When you're sitting and working, even if you have a long neck and a good neck position, make sure you don't over tuck your chin. And of course, if your patient comes in like this with this tucked chin and hyperextension at the, well, hinging at the mid cervical, we'll have to fix that as well. You need to know the potential sequela of this problem. It can be diffuse. The presentation can be very all over the spectrum of diffuse maladies. Look for venous congestion when the patient lies down. Often they will have a purpuric, like a redness, purple uh, facial expression or facial color. When they lie down, most likely the uh, external jugular veins will be distended because we know that the studies show when we have compression or stenosis of the internal jugular vein, there will be increase of secondary venous outflow, for example, in the dural plexus, uh, vertebral plexus, sorry, and the external jugular veins. Now, I hope this video was informative. Look for the neck tuck. Do not do the McKenzie tucks. It is harmful. It should not be done. We need to come forward. Long neck, chin, not up like this, not down here, in the middle, long neck. And of course it doesn't matter if you're down here for 5 seconds, but you don't want to sit there all the day. That's the point, right? I was working like this for 10 hours per day. It was killing me. Don't do that. Okay. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. I wish you all a good day. If you have a question, leave it down below in the, in the comment box. And uh, bye.